right, here we go. Zap Judah, welcome back. Yo. What's good, champ? Chilling, man. Chilling, chilling. Former world champion boxer is back in the building. How, how many world champions? Six times. Six time world champion. Yeah. Hey, man, it's always an honor Thank when you come you. and sit down with us. <laughs> you know? Coming off the heels of the Mike Tyson interview that we did some oh, yeah. months back. We had some fun, man. Oh, yeah. Some fun, man. Oh, yeah. I'm Epic happy that Epic. people people are really accepting it well. You know what I'm saying? They they appreciate, you know, Mike opening up and saying a lot of good stuff that they never heard before. So I've been getting a lot of good feedback from it. Oh, yeah. I mean, because you guys are actually real friends. Mm -hmm. And you could tell, you know, by the dynamic between you two. Mm -hmm. you know, things brother. changed a little bit when I jumped in the interview. <laughs> so my brother, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the movie goes, bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, before we can talk about anything else, you know, we have the Mayweather Logan Paul fight, which is going to happen a couple of days from now. Yeah. You know, by the time this comes out, it's going to be right before it comes out. Now, I'm going to tell you, you were the first person to call this fight. Mm. Remember when mm. we were doing the, the reshoot at mm. Tyson's gym? Yeah. We were hanging out afterwards, smoking blunts. Yeah. And you were like, yo, man. Mayweather gonna fight Logan Paul. And you I said, like, get the fuck out of here. You looked at me like, what? 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 That don't I, even make sense, Zab. I was like, that's what I said. I just shut my mouth. I was ready to bet you, actually. <laughs> that's I think, crazy. you know, we almost bet. I was gonna that's put up crazy. like 10 racks that's just because it sounded so ridiculous. Yeah. Lo and behold. You'd have been negative 10. I would have been negative 10. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lloyd May Mayweather, Logan Paul. Woo. Okay. Number one. What do you think is going to happen in this fight? Um, I think it's entertainment. You know, you got, you know, Floyd is a, a super athlete, and you got Logan Paul, which is a, a great athlete. The reason why I say that is because I've seen him. I've watched his growth. I've seen him, his dedication. I, I, I was up at his house with my Calabasas, and he really training. He, he Back then, he was training. So now, up into the fight, I mean, his body, your body tells the tale. His body don't tell no lie. I mean, look at him. He's a white kid, and look at his body. He's chiseled. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's yep. dope. You know what I mean? So you got to you gotta get that to him, man. He put hard work in and dedication, so he's coming to fight. And I seen him fight. Like I said again, I repeat, I ain't scared. He look like a young Muhammad Ali. Watch. Watch. Well, you, you compared Logan Paul. To a young, young Muhammad Ali. Watch how he box. I'm talking about form wise. Okay. Dance wise, wise. Watch, watch, watch. Okay. Okay. I mean, listen. When yeah. I seen him, I seen him in the camp training. When I seen him, right. I ain't retarded. I, I know boxing. You know boxing. He was, he was on his top. I said, wait a minute. I said, wait a minute. The next guy came in and did the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch. Watch. Not saying he is Muhammad Ali. No, I'm saying his style mimics. I'm a, yeah. If you got to compare to anybody in boxing, mm -hmm. watch. Okay. Were you part of his training camp at one point? Yeah. Okay. Did you get in the ring with him and spar? No. Why is that? Just not what you do? Yeah. It just wasn't what we... It, it, it wasn't the time we was on. You know okay. What I'm it got it. It wasn't that kind of time. But what do you think will happen in this ring? What I think? Your I prediction. Don't I don't know, man. I mean, like, you know... These guys are these guys are the biggest and the greatest showmen of all of our time. I mean, like I, I don't know, man. I mean, like you know, I mean, Floyd looked mad when his hat got snatched, and you know, he, you know, he seemed to be like he gonna turn up. You know, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, man. Don't okay. let don't let my little opinion affect what people go. Oh, Sam said, nope. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay, is there a chance that Floyd can get knocked out? Anybody can be knocked Anybody out. Anybody can get knocked out. That's very that's, true. That's very facts. true. <laughs> okay. Well, number one, the rules just got released. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are kind of, I wouldn't say up in arms, but they're a little bit surprised by the rules. And the mm -hmm. rules are KO is up to the referee discretion, eight three minute rounds, knockouts legal, 10 ounce gloves. Is, is, that, is that what professional boxers use? We we were yeah, ten to eights. Yeah, we were eights or tens. Eight yeah. or ten. Okay. Right. So tens, yeah, because they big guys. Shit. Yeah. Yep. That's normal. No headgear. Normal. No judges. Did you know that? No. No judges. No official winner red. Okay. So it's a spawn session. Exhibition. Exhibition. Spawn session. 
Right. It's gonna, it's gonna be dope either way out. Both both athletes are prepared well. Floyd body is tremendous. Logan Paul body is tremendous. These guys is going. They're gonna go in there and fight. They're gonna go in there and fight. Floyd's not gonna let nobody or nothing. He's not gonna play the game of oh knock me down. No, he's not gonna do that. He's not gonna do that. So he's gonna go for hundred percent. Let's get to the tail of the tape. Floyd Mayweather, 44 years old. Logan Paul, 26 years old. 18-year mm. age difference. You're how old? 43. Okay. At 44, 43, like number one, at 43, do you feel your body is significantly different? I mean, not that you're training for boxing right now, but overall, do you feel like your body is significantly different than when you were in your 20s? 100%. 100%. So that's going to play a real role. Yeah, but what's going to substitute for that? Experience. Right. Experience. Floyd has 24 years of experience. Logan Paul has one. That's professional. <laughs> That's professional. That doesn't count the Golden Gloves. Right, it don't count from altogether it's like 30-something years, 35, 30-something years for, for um, Floyd. Well, yeah, because he's a prodigy. His dad was a boxer. His uncle was a boxer. He Started was boxing young, probably when he was five. Six years old, five, yep. Yeah, there you go. Height, 5'8". Versus 6-2. Means nothing. Means nothing. Nothing. In a fight, means nothing. Mike Tyson was like this. He fought everybody like this. And they went night night. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect to nobody. Night night. Floyd's record is 50-0-0. Oh, oh. Logan Paul's record is 0-1-0. Zero, and zero. He lost? He had one loss. Yeah, he's actually never won a, a boxing match. His brother's won a few. Who did he fight? I never knew he lost. Look it up. I never knew he lost. He fought KSI. Oh, KSI. KSI, who's a YouTuber also. Yeah, yeah. So he didn't yeah. fight. It wasn't a, a loss to a professional fighter, but it was... I like KSI. KSI kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. But he lost to KSI. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't have the, the arm reach mm -hmm. stats in front of me, but I yeah, would but assume... Yeah, but I think Logan much, Paul yeah, yeah. should be really long reason. I mean, in terms of reach, how big of a difference does that make in the ring? A lot. A lot. If you know how to use it. <laughs> right. Upon knowing how to use it, prop no, that's that yeah. means a lot. Bro, you, that's like getting, you know, a basketball player first day in the gym with Jordan and say, yo, dunk the ball. He gonna get up and do the ah, ah Jordan gonna do this. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna be like yeah. he, he gonna be looking crazy because he's not ready for that yet. So different. Well, you know, all the, the pre fight interviews have been circulating. Floyd said this. He said, I'm fighting a YouTuber who thinks he's a real fighter and I'm getting crazy money for it. This is not a real fight for me. It's a real fight for him. I retired from boxing, but I didn't retire from entertainment. And I didn't retire from making money. And I've already made $30 million in the lead up to this fight. I just told you, he's brilliant. <laughs> what can you say? It's brilliant. It's a brilliant guy. If you can find a way to outside of your career after retirement to pull off a, a heist. I call it a heist. It's a bank robbery. You know what I'm saying? They going in there. They, they, don't, they don't even got to wear a mask. You know, it's a beautiful job. Beautiful job, Floyd. <laughs> beautiful job. Logan Paul as well. Because for a YouTuber to even put itself in a position to be able to make an earning out of this and the, to earn just the lights and everything like that, wow, it's amazing. Well, Logan Paul did interview as well. He said, you're witnessing the greatest finesse job in history. Why is Floyd Mayweather getting in the ring with me? He has everything to lose. You got finessed. You got finessed, Floyd. Imagine I beat him for one second. I have to imagine taking this fight would be a regret. Mm. Do you think Floyd's getting finessed? We don't know. We got to see. <laughs> I mean, 30 million bucks. <laughs> I mean, nobody loses. Right, except there's this one thing, and this is what you just mentioned. Anyone could get knocked out. 100%. These are two men. There's not a robot in there. There's not a grizzly bear. It's two human beings. You know, you managed to, you know, to knock down Floyd. You know, people are going to say what they're going to say, but to me, that was a knockdown. <laughs> if, for whatever reason, Logan gets that one punch in, and he knocks Floyd out, that is going to obliterate his legacy. I'll be shocked. 
you will be shocked. I'm the shocked. whole world will be shocked. But mm. it'll be 50 and 0 with an asterisk. Because, yes, this is not, you know, a real, like, boxing match that goes into someone's history. But if he gets knocked out, there's yeah. going to be an asterisk by his name. Am I right? Yeah, of course. It's like street credit. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. It's like getting, getting knocked out on the block in front of everybody. Right. So he's Nothing taking that good. risk, especially with someone who is bigger than him physically. Definitely not as skilled, but bigger than him physically. And... Listen, if he gets knocked out, I mean, because Floyd has the greatest boxing record, period, right? In the history of boxing? Does no. anyone have a, a better record than Floyd? Yeah, it's been a guy that's been 80 and 0. Who? You no, know, Chavez at one time was 80 and 0. You did, remember that? Did he finish his career 80 and 0? No. But that's he what was, I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Who finished their career better than 50 and 0? Oh, mm, no, Floyd got it. That's what I'm saying. 100%. The greatest. I thought you meant have there ever been somebody with a high win, high undefeated. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. That yes, people have gotten more wins than Floyd, that have fought more than Floyd. Mm -hmm. I mean, shit. Um, I mean, Larry Holmes mm -hmm. was was approaching that at one point, and then mm -hmm. and then he lost. So that's the whole thing. Floyd wants to go down as the greatest ever, best record ever, period. Mm -hmm. And this exhibition match. He's taking somewhat of a risk. Not a huge risk, but there's always going to be a risk. Am I right? To an extent. <laughs> Explain. Yeah. Explain. It's only to an extent. I mean, boxing-wise, as long as it doesn't go down under the commission rulage, you know what I'm saying, then it's not a, under the professional. That professional record is safe. Okay. All right. <laughs> he put that in the safe. You know what I mean? He going to do he doing something else right now. Well, then there's the undercard. Ocho Cinco versus MMA fighter Brian Maxwell. Right. What do you think of that fight? Um I like Ocho. You know? Um briefly. Yeah. In and out. Yeah. He the homie. Okay. Very well built, you know, professional athlete, in shape. Have you seen him train at all? No, I haven't seen him train yet. Okay. <clears throat> you know, for example, I had Faze on Love on my show recently. Mm -hmm. And he thinks this is not going to work out. He's saying, yeah, you know, Ocho Cinco got muscles and all that, but he's not sure if he has the heart when it comes to being in the ring. I mean, I don't know. I, I, like I said, it's hard for me to pass a judgment on a fighter when I've never seen him. <laughs> I never seen the man even hold his hands up. I don't know, but I know he fights. I know he's under good people. I know he's training with good people, and the people that he's with, they're not gonna let him go in the ring and not know nothing. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's gonna shock the world. Well, he said if that's the if that's the story on him now, then yeah, he's he probably gonna shock the world. Well, he said this is a one time thing. I've done some crazy things in my life, and this is. This is one to add and scratch off the bucket list. I'm coming in there to have fun and entertain. Man you know said. how much he's getting? No. Yeah. It's probably a nice check, though. Gotta be. To be on the undercard of, of a Mayweather fight? Right. It's gotta be a nice check. Boy, set the rookie high. <clears throat> yeah. And you're actually gonna be at the Mayweather fight. I'll be there. Yeah. yeah. Let me check it out. Ringside? Yeah, you know. Of course, with the big homie. We got the play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, got the play. Well, I mean, your man, you know, Mike Tyson, he said, you know, in terms of Logan Paul, he said he's going to get beat badly. Mm. That's his prediction. He said Logan Paul is going to get beat badly? Yes. Possibility. Yes. Possibility. Conor McGregor said that uh, Mayweather fighting non-pro boxers like Logan Paul is sad. No. You don't think so? No. Well, we're going to see what happens. Right. I mean, because the guy that, that Ocho Cinco is fighting, although he has participated in some MMA, some boxing, some bare knuckles, uh, he's 0-3 in boxing matches. Okay. So he's not a great boxer. Not mm -hmm. to say he's not a great brawler or however else you want to describe it, but he's not a great boxer. Um. And a lot of times it seems like when you have these celebrity matches, you get people, you match 
they get matched up with people who are not great at the sport. You know what I'm saying? So, for mm-hmm. example, now Mayweather is breaking that. Mm-hmm. You know, you got someone who's phenomenal, who's who's the best ever mm-hmm. in the sport. But a lot of times, you know, when Tyson did it, Roy Jones did it. What do you mean? They fought each other. They fought each other. No, yeah. but I'm saying when you get like YouTubers, like when you okay. get celebrities okay. in the ring, they usually don't fight someone who's all that great. Because, for example, the Jake Paul Ben Askren fight. Mm-hmm. Ben Askren had a muffin top. <laughs> he didn't even look like he was in shape at all. Mm. I never seen anyone so happy to get knocked out. <laughs> Did you see him after the fight? No, I didn't see that. No, his grin was from ear to ear. Crazy, happy to get knocked out. Happy to get knocked out. Did you, you watch that, that fight? I seen bits and pieces, but I ain't watched. It. I wasn't. Oh, no. Did you watch the knockout though? Did yeah, you I see the knockout. Clip? Big. <laughs> Did that look like a real knockout, or did it look like he he, he took a fall? I don't know. I mean, he got the win, so you got to say that, you know? <laughs> he got the win. You are glad over that. <laughs> Trying to trip uh, your boy up. Yeah. No, no, I don't know. Well, we're going to see what happens, man. Sure. We're going to see what happens, you know? Right after this, you know, these set of clips come out, you know, there won't be anything to predict anymore. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be history at that who point. Who Jake Paul is, who Floyd Mayweather is. Yeah, you know? What would you think of the whole uh, Jake Paul gotcha hat? Oh, that was dope. You like that? that? I mean, it was dope. I mean, it was, bri- it was brilliant based on what he did after with the whole campaign and the hats and the selling the hats and everything like that. Yeah, he started selling hats that said gotcha hat. Right, right. But on, he got a tattoo on his leg that said gotcha yeah, yeah, hat. Yeah, all that. But on Floyd's part, I mean, as a person, I don't know. I mean, I, I would have felt disrespected. Yeah. Oh, he was completely disrespected. Yeah, he snatched my hat off and, you know. Yeah. I mean, Floyd looked generally angry. You don't really see Floyd angry like that. Even in a, in the ring, he don't look angry. He looked angry that day. Yeah. Listen, man, the, the Paul brothers, you got to hand it to them just for entertainment. Like, the entertainment aspect of it is is, is insane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they're they phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. They're they phenomenal, do. man. They be, they, they be rolling. Hats off. Well, the next celebrity fight that's happening is Lamar Odom versus Aaron Carter. Mm -hmm. I've interviewed Lamar Odom. I mean, the the size difference between these two is just almost comical. (laughs) You got one guy who's seven feet tall, another guy who's like six foot one. Mm -hmm. There's about a a hundred pound weight difference. What do you think of that fight? Um, I don't know, man. I don't think of it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think of it. I mean, I wish Lamar and Lewis Caswell were celebrity championship boxing over here. Right, we're, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> we're going to get into that. Yeah, don't think that's not on the list. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I haven't tuned in. You know, you know, to uh, pay attention to what's going on over there. But um, you know, Lamar, my boy. Oh, you know Lamar? Yeah, yeah it's my guy. Okay. Queens. It's Queens. Queens. I'm Brooklyn. Yeah, it's Queens. Yeah, yeah. There so, you go. You know, um, I wish him well. You know, that's what's up. Yeah, I mean, they CCB had the way in. over here. <laughs> they had the way in. Yeah. And uh, Aaron Carter actually shoved. Oh, he hit him? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Well, he didn't what hit happened? him. He, he shoved him. What happened? Lamar just kind of laughed. <laughs> See, let me say something. Like, can I tell you that? Like, that's probably been my biggest mistake in probably the boxing game. Or not even a mistake. Like, just one of some of my wildest moments. When people like turned on and did like those antics, you know, you push him and the big break up, you break it up, you go home. I wasn't with that. I was, <laughs> we was with the real turn up. Like they gonna keep going all the way, the parking lot down the street. Like, you know what I mean? Like that was a different. Okay. I don't know, it's crazy. I mean, so, has that happened in any of your weigh-ins where, where your opponent like shoved you or tried to take a swing at you or anything else like that? Are you not gonna answer that? <laughs> I mean. If it happened, it's on tape, right? Oh, yeah. Go check it out. Okay, so it's happened before. I mean, can we talk we had, about it? Yeah, we had a couple... Um, um, Dust-ups? <laughs> <laughs> um, violators that okay. learned about demonstrators. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, can you say what happened? I mean, like I said, it's all on tape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 um, it's all public information. No, so. no, no. You, you got to find it. Man, I ain't gonna You're tell not going to talk about it? You're going to find it. Okay. No, but I'm saying I never understood that. Like, I understood, like, you know, this dude right here in front of you, he pushed you or even punched you. 
and then a couple of security jump in and break it up and then they say stop and okay you stop and you go your way and he go I'm not doing that. I mean Tyson was good for that. Tyson's had some weigh-ins where he like, you know, ran up on the dude and you know, and so forth. There's been there's been a couple of wild, wild weigh-ins with Tyson. Um okay. <laughs> but you've had your own, I see. Word up. Uh, okay. Okay. Well the you know, it's funny because I, I interviewed. I didn't uh, say I didn't say it to say for that. So let me say that. I, I didn't even go into you got that. You try to pull it up. All right, I that's fine. That's I, fine. I didn't say for that. I, okay. I, I done buried that guy already. Okay, all right. So, all right, we'll yeah, leave it you know alone. What I'm saying? But we'll, we'll leave it like alone. Like I said, like I said, when I was fighting, I said back when I was fighting, that was a problem that I had was I didn't know how to like like all right, you pushing you, I'm gonna get you later. I was like, what? Let's go back door. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was really like, what? All right, let's go back door. I thought we were gonna catch him in the parking lot. Facts, mm. we're gonna catch him in the parking lot. Okay, like it's gonna like it's yeah, it's been fighters out there that that they could say Team Judah and Zab Judah they didn't get treated too friendly. They were, it didn't, you know, we caught fighters on staircases. Oh, you've actually caught some of these dudes off camera. Oh man. Oh, man. okay. Facts. Okay. Facts. But that's what I'm saying. That was back then. That's that's who I was. So when I see this stuff now, like that, you know what I'm saying? I be looking like, that's it. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, I'm done. No, I'll be, okay, that was good. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It was different. It was, you know. Well, it's actually kind of kind of interesting because when I was interviewing Lamar Odom, right, and I was talking to him about the Aaron Carter fight, mm-hmm. and. Uh, he goes, nah, man, I ain't going to knock him out. You know, I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to have fun. You know, I'm not going to hurt him or nothing else like that. And I said, uh, did you see the video of him boxing naked? And he goes, nah. And I pulled out this video, right? I guess I guess Aaron Carter put it out on his OnlyFans. He's got like an OnlyFans account where he gets naked or whatever, you know. And, and, and a video came out of him. What, what do you call it when you're, when you're, when you're boxing like, those, like, like a dummy? Like, Heavy back. Not the heavy bag, but it looks like a person, kind of. Yeah, it's like a heavy bag. A heavy bag, basically. Okay, so he's basically fighting a heavy bag, butt naked. And, like, Lamar's like, what? This motherfucker got his dick hanging out? Oh, oh no, no. I, I'm disrespected now. Now, now I'm going to knock him out. <laughs> he's like, now it's like, like, he's like I, I'm insulted by that shit now. <laughs> Hold on, he got his dick out? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to be his ass for that. I'm going to be his ass for that. Yeah. I'm going to be his ass for that. He got his whole little pink package out. I'm going to be his ass for that. No, I'm going to be his ass for that. (laughs) Tell you, the antics these days are on a different level. They're on a completely different level. Uh, Well... The uh, in the Jake Paul fight, in the undercard was Bosco one hundred and Gonzo, mm-hmm. both of which I've I've interviewed about this. Did you watch that at all? No, I, no, I didn't see that fight. But okay. I heard it was good though. I heard it went at it. They went at it. Yeah, they, they went at they it. Went I mean, the it. size difference between these two was pretty big. Yeah, I didn't see that part. Yeah, Gonzo is like, I don't know, like maybe five eight, five seven, mm-hmm. and Bosco's like six two. And uh, the weight difference was so big that in order to even do it, they had to wear a headgear, mm. right? And, um, you know, the two of them actually had beef before. Like, not like, you know, I'm, I'm going to shoot you beef, but like they wanted, to, they wanted to beat each other up. So they had problems with each other. They actually wanted to meet up in a park <laughs> on a couple of occasions and just fist fight each other. But they actually agreed to, to get in the ring and box. Mm. And... Um, it was essentially a draw, but they had the heart to get in there and actually do it. I respect them for that. It takes a lot of balls to climb through the ropes. Anybody. Yeah. It's tough. How many rounds did it go? I think three rounds. It's dope. It's tough. It's tough to go through rounds. Yeah. I take all the homies to the gym and say, hit the back. <laughs> One minute is a motherfucker. You still got two more to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's tough. Yeah, no, I, I, I was boxing for a little bit, you know, not 
seriously, but you know, at the local gym and, uh, you know, put on the headgear and everything. And uh, let me tell you, even with headgear, getting hit with that uppercut, your jaw will hurt for a few days. <laughs> any shot. Getting hit with any shot. Yeah. Try and, to get hit with the straight left hand, the hook, the uppercut, or whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, but just being, I mean, but apart from that, just being in the ring with someone mm -hmm. and they're trying to punch you in the face mm -hmm. or the body mm -hmm. and the amount of pressure you go through, it's like the longest three minutes of your life. It is unbelievably like. So you had spawn sessions. Yeah, yeah. I sparred with dudes before. Uh oh, tell me yeah. about that, Vlad. Yeah, I mean, I'll. Oh, Vlad, Vlad, Judas interviewing Vlad. <laughs> I, I sparred. Yo, yeah, I sparred. How did the spawn sparred. sessions go? Good. It went cool. You know. What's your, I mean, what's your best asset? Your jab, hook, right hand, what, what? Man, it's been so long. Um, Are you a boxer or a puncher? Probably more of a puncher. Are you more of a puncher? Oh, so you come yeah. with the shit. You come with it. I mean, you know, I, I was okay. I mean, it actually, I, I'll tell you what happened was uh, I was actually really getting into it. And then one day I was uh, just in my house, just practicing punches, like practicing like, you know, left hooks and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I was standing too close to a doorway and I ended up smashing my hand into the doorway oh. and I broke my finger on my left hand. I split my knuckle. And then, I mean, I can't actually make a fist anymore with my left hand oh. after that. So that so was- you actually can't bend you. So you got a permanent C. I got a permanent C. Right. <laughs> I can never join the Bloods. <laughs> Yo, Vlad is crazy. Yo. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I broke my hand. Yeah. But, you, but you know something? I, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Like, during that time in my life, I kind of had a lot of anger. Mm -hmm. And as I was getting better at boxing, yeah. I, was getting, I was getting more aggressive. And I think if I hadn't broke my hand, something may have happened. So you think the boxing made you aggressive? I think so. Wow, I never felt like that before. Nah. nah. Well, because you now know how to punch someone. You know what I mean? You now know what you're doing. You now know how to twist your body when you're, you know, when you're punching. You now know what an uppercut is. You now, you know, you know what I mean? And it's so like- So you say the more you learn, the more- Yeah, you, the more confident you get, the more you don't want to back down well, from isn't altercations. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? It, like, is, yeah, it is good, know? it is good, but I'm saying like at the time, in my life at the time, me being in my early 20s and, and having some issues and everything else like that, I think I probably would have gotten into something possibly even deadly. If, so if that the finger happened. breakage was the reason that? I, I think so, because after that, it just kind of, I, I, just, I just calmed down and I said, right. all right, you know, I'm not going to get, you know, into any more altercations. You know, I'm going to, you know, calm down. I'm going to not, not keep going in that direction. I stopped boxing. And uh, yeah, I, I think you know. Also, I mean, you you don't know what happens in the future, but I think that I was I was seeing myself becoming becoming more. So if aggressive. you didn't break that finger, there was a chance we could have seen the DJ Vlad running up in the sets, kicking shit open. Boom! What's up? Who knows? In the building. Boom! Who boom! Boom! Who knows? Knocking motherfuckers out all that. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but you know, the path I took ended up going pretty well. So okay. so I'm not uh you know I, I'm not really uh complaining. Well, Mike Tyson, who you're very close to. He had uh, the Roy Jones Jr. fight. And then there were supposed to be other fights. But they seemed to kind of just be up in the air. Because originally he was supposed to fight Holyfield. Right? I don't know. That's what they were saying. That was supposed to be the next fight. Who was they? Well, I mean, he was saying it at one point. <laughs> no, I don't know. I never heard. Oh, you, you never heard him say that he's... he's... No, I'm, no, he never like, made no announcement I'm fighting Holyfield. No. He never said that. He did it? Well, I mean, for example, there's an article uh, on ESPN on March 22nd. It said, Evander Holyfield representative say Mike Tyson declined a $25 million offer to fight. Decline. That's a decline. That's a decline. Hey, you know, I'm not interested. I'm just saying, I personally, Zab, never heard him like, yo, I'm, I'm, come on, let's train. We, I'm going to fight. You know what I mean? No, no. Well, in April of this year, there, there's an article that said, the fight is on. Mike Tyson confirms date for trilogy fight against Evander Holyfield. Who was this uh, talking? But then I guess, yeah, it was supposed to be on May 29th. Okay, that never happened. Okay, so the whole thing, the whole thing is up in the air. Uh, the whole thing is up in the air. Um, but then they were saying, let me, let me see if this is confirmed. Hold on a second, because uh, in April, 
there was a, there was a video actually with Mike Tyson mm-hmm. that TMZ captured, who said that he's fighting Lennox Lewis. He, he said, "I'm going to fight Lennox Lewis." He said that. Okay. Do you see that happening? If he say, "Yeah," I mean, like, <laughs> only thing I can do is say, "I can uh, go on with a man." Say, we can't say, but we all, we all, as fans, we want to see all that. Tyson Holyfield, Tyson Lennox, Tyson Buster Douglas. If we can see another one, we can, right? We want to see them all. Like, come on, see him fight all that. Okay, but. That's not necessarily what the man want to do. So we got to wait to see when he makes his mind up and chooses to do. Who would you rather see? Tyson versus Holyfield or Lennox Lewis? Whoever bro want to see. It doesn't I mean, matter. Nah, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I mean, you know what? I know all these guys personally, and I think that everybody's a, they at an elder age right now. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's mm-hmm. energy and and, 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 and timing is different right now. Everybody they ain't even on it like that. You know, let's see Lennox. Lennox be chilling. He, you know, Mike, Mike, Mike be chilling, man. You know, he laid back. So, well, you know, what's actually interesting is uh, a friend of mine, Michael Jai White. He actually posted an Instagram photo. Now it's not a real photo, but it actually was a tail, like kind of like a Photoshop tail, the tape mm-hmm. of Mike Tyson versus Michael Jai White, mm-hmm. and uh, which is interesting because. You got Mike Tyson fighting the guy who played Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. Remember the, the the HBO movie? Mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. You know, Tyson's fifty four. Michael Jai White's fifty three. Um, you know, Tyson's five foot ten. Uh, Michael's six foot one. Um, you know, that would be a very interesting fight because Michael Jai White's an actual martial artist. He's not a boxer. He's more of a karate guy, but. Why that would be an interesting one. Why would it be interesting? Why? I don't know. Maybe because I know both of those guys now. Right. That's why. That's <laughs> why it'd be interesting to see you. Yeah. But in the boxing ring and boxing rules, Michael J. White. He don't get thirty seconds. It's my guy and all that, but he don't got thirty seconds. He knows that. <laughs> he thirty. He don't got thirty seconds. Like, like you gotta remember this. As fighters, this is what we done from babies. Mike is still, you see him, he's in top shape right now, still walking around. He's in he's top in shape. good shape, so he can jump off the couch and quickly, voo, voo, voo. that shit ain't going to be funny. That shit. Well, well, Michael's in top shape also. Bro, it's a different type of movement. A different type of movement. Have you seen- Under the boxing rulage right now, Michael J. White getting the, getting the ring with Mike Tyson, it's night-night, Jay. Night-night. Night-night? Night-night. Early. I don't even give him 30 seconds. 30 seconds. You I think it's going to be what? The old Tyson coming in, bow, game over. It's facts. It's facts. Well, because Michael actually spars with a lot of people. He's, he spars with uh, Bones Jones. I got a video of it. And he's holding his own. But, you know, but there's a lot of kicking and so forth involved. Nah. Bones Jones is UFC. Still, he's the best UFC fighter out there. Yes. yes. He's not the best boxer out there. Okay, okay. So let, let me under boxing rules in there. Michael J. White stand. He don't, he don't stand thirty. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. Now with Tyson, nope. Okay. I mean, nope. Conor McGregor didn't do a bad job in the ring. Nope. Thirty seconds is it? Well, Conor lasted all twelve rounds. I'm talking about Michael J. and Mike Tyson. Okay. I ain't talking about Conor. I ain't talking about nobody. Michael J. and Mike. Tyson. And no disrespect to Michael J. No disrespect to him. I'm just saying the timing right now. A time and bros on. He, that's 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 okay. Michael J. still got. He still got. Yeah, yeah. He good with this right here, but he got to get this together. You know, he got to get his hands in, and before he get that together, before he's got to get. It's, you don't learn that shit overnight. That shit is that. That shit don't learn overnight. He gonna run into some shit that watch. He gonna forget his name. Watch. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you a question. I mean, have you, you've seen you've seen Bones fight in the UFC. Yeah, it's my man, Bones Jones. Oh, it's your friend. Yeah. Okay. Unbelievably tall. Unbelievable reach. His arms are like fucking plastic man. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Huge and and huge legs. Mm-hmm. Like he's his overall shape is just very different. Mm-hmm. If you put bones in the ring in a boxing ring, what would happen? Got to teach him how to box. But but there is nope, a certain nope, level of boxing. Nope, the, nope, I mean cuz nope, he's nope, he's not always nope. on the ground. He would tell you. He'd tell you like, "Yo, Doing boxing is different than, 
You know what I'm saying? It's a whole different, it's a whole different movement, everything. You know what I'm huh. saying? Him, he's here, he's there, he's down, he's low. Hit boxing, we right here with it. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole different type of situation, difference. If he put them gloves on with boxers, it's, it, he'll tell you it's tough. It's different for him. We, there's like boxers. If a boxer put them, them little UFC shit on and take his shoes off <laughs> and, <laughs> and be doing this shit, brother, it's going to be different. I know that. Okay. What would happen if someone threw you into, a, into the octagon? Nobody can't throw me in shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can't throw me okay, in shit. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I, I give you $10 million, hypothetically, to jump in the ring with one of the top UFC guys. No, it's buffoonery. <laughs> buffoonery. <laughs> it's buffoonery. It's buffoonery. Because you don't, you don't really know ground like that. I don't know like none that. of that shit. I don't yeah. know. Listen, man, I don't know that. You know, I'm going to do street shit, and then once street shit stop, you know, we in the cage. And we, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be... It's, it's different. I don't, I don't know that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't even... I'm talking, yeah, I could probably learn and develop the skill and learn it over time. But sitting here right now, that ain't my style. That ain't my thing. That's oh, oh my, yeah. Now, listen, I've, I've wrestled I'm, in high school. I'm with the shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In high school, I wrestled, and I even have an incident in my life where wrestling literally saved my life, you know, where, where I had a situation where, where I almost died. And, and the fact that I knew how to wrestle, I literally walked away from that situation. Mm. Uh, and that's a whole different type of skill, right. like to be to to know groundwork, to know how to yeah. catch someone in a chokehold, yeah. how to yeah. how to work, you know, how to be on your back and and so forth, and just the, the damage you take from being on the ground, where people are like doing cross faces on Most you. Most people, and, the regular person, don't know how to stay down there. Like those guys stay; they're taught to stay down there. You got to stand there for twenty minutes. Stay down there. You got to do all your fighting from down there. They, nobody from the street is taught that. You get them on the ground, they trying to trying to jump up. They trying, <laughs> right. they trying to get up faster than they went down there. You know what I mean? So right. it's a whole different kind of fight, man. And let's not forget kicking. <laughs> it's a whole different kind of fight. Let's, bro. let's forget that skill set that a boxer said, doesn't I have. Said, I, mean, I have total respect for all those guys, man. But you know, even the guy that's fighting the other guy, like the UFC fighter, like the, if you do what they do, it's a whole different fight, brother. Whole different. You put Mayweather and Conor McGregor in the cage together. That's a whole a different slaughter. fight. It'd be a whole slaughter. Whole different fight. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, yeah, man. Because you see- It's these... like when he got in the ring with Floyd. Whole different fight. You know what I'm saying? Although McGregor did okay. I'm not going to say he did great. He did okay. He did what Floyd allowed him to do. You think Floyd was just playing with him? I, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say that he did what Floyd allowed him to do. Well, uh, after Conor McGregor lost last time, Mayweather called him Con Artist McLoser. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's not my beef. <laughs> it's not your beef. Someone else's beef. Well, Michael Jai White, in a, the last interview that we did, he said that if he got in the ring with Mayweather, he said that Mayweather would beat him in boxing, but he couldn't hurt him. Look at this. I just said that. So now we're talking about Mike Tyson. No, no, we're talking. <laughs> Okay. Ah, okay. I see where you're going. I'm talking about. Yes. We said that we talking about Mike Tyson, a person that has the ability to hurt him. It's yeah. Mike Knight. I'm telling you, like he's uh, it's, uh, honest, honest opinion. You know what I mean? It came right back around. Boom. Yeah. We answered two questions in one. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Well, well, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that statement to be true? Saying because of the overall size difference between the two, that someone like a Someone like a Mayweather couldn't hurt someone like a Michael Jai White based on just the overall body mass, bone density, and so forth. Okay. A, a boxing match? Oh, oh, me boxing Floyd Mayweather? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't think I'd win that. No. Uh, okay. Because on points? No, no, it's no way. I, I couldn't touch him. He's too fast. No, he's too, he's way too damn fast. Like, it's... No. Okay. <laughs> There's no way. It's no... That guy is too damn skilled. There's no way I can't see me landing on him. Uh, no, but I mean, it's not. It's not like he would beat me up because I mean, it's a different thing, though. Like, yeah, he it like he'd be he'd be tagging me up, and I'd be laughing my ass off because I'd be so entertained by it. <laughs> it, it, it. That's what would happen. It's you know, it'd be very hard for somebody that size. To really hurt somebody, you know, I mean, I know how to take shots. I've been fighting 230 pounders, 250 pounders, even bare knuckle you know, over the years. 
I don't know about Mayweather and Jai White, but I know about Zab and somebody that big, they going to sleep. It's been done already. Like, so you've knocked out dudes that are yes, 200 and something three pounds. three times my size. Yes. Really? Yes, yes. Six, 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 five. Yes, yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. No mamas. No joke. No, I believe you. I believe <laughs> no you. Joke. I, I, I believe you. No joke. You. From Brooklyn. Like, okay, you, so you someone ran up on you big. Like That don't mean nothing. None of that means nothing. What'd you hit him with? I'm just out of some shit that they not going to see. <laughs> <laughs> ten, ten piece with a biscuit. <laughs> Some shit they not gonna see. You know what I mean? <laughs> a problem. <laughs> no joke. You know I don't mess with nobody, so I don't expect people to mess with me. And people don't. People don't. I don't go nowhere. I go everywhere. I don't. I don't have a problem with people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And most of the the most toughest gangsterish people in the world are mostly my friends. Most of all that we we gravitate right to each other ASAP. Right, yeah. I mean, I've been yeah, around you lots of times. Yeah, you're not out there nah, flexing, I don't, I don't, causing nah, problems. I don't do that. I don't do nah. that. But if a motherfucker try it, this boy, listen. <laughs> okay, so someone just ran up on you in the street and, and then, did, then and they did what? Have to learn. What, what do they do to to earn that that beat down? What they huh? What do they do to you in order to to catch oh, that disrespect violation? Anything that goes across the a go goes across the principles of being a man. You a man. What you know what violation feels like? No, I know. <laughs> I'm a man I as well. If if I feel violation, then I I demonstrate. You know what I mean? That's it. No, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I remember remember when Floyd Mayweather got into it with T.I.? Yeah. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And it was over Tiny, allegedly, mm-hmm. or whatever, some convoluted story. That's not bad. That's the man wife. The man supposed yeah. to go to war for his wife. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I remember I knew someone who was standing right next to Floyd, that was with Floyd that particular day. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say who it is because it was, it was a personal story. But the story that I heard was that they ran into each other, you know, their entourages, whatever, and uh, T.I. started like mouthing off, whatever, and Floyd's like, no, no, let him, let, let, him, let him go ahead and say what he wants to say, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so he let T.I. walk up to him, get face-to-face with him, and T.I. started, you know, Talking shit. And I'm always going to remember this. Floyd looked at him and said, you must have forgot what I do for a living. Some, sound like something. Took, to took off on him. Say. And took off on him. I don't know. I wasn't there. I, that's that's I, what I heard. But that's, yeah, that's something a boxer would tell a, a person. Like, what? Like, that's what I do. Like, I do this my whole life. Like, I, like I tell like, see how you wake up every day and put your socks on before your shoes? That's how I've been training. Bro, right. I, no joke. My friends and people that know me know since the age of five years old, I've been in that gym damn near every day. Mm. Like, damn near got perfect attendance. You know, you can look at my record three, four, five times, fights a year. I mean, like, you know, it takes time in between. So I'm training for a year after year after year after year. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So this is the first time in my life I'm taking a break. I'm relaxing. You know what I mean? Well, from what I understand, when you're a professional boxer, uh, aren't your hands considered lethal weapons? Depends on who considering it. No, in terms of the law. <laughs> in terms of the law. The law always going to consider your hands. Everybody's hands are lethal weapons. But I thought, lethal with, weapon. I thought with boxers are, are different. Yeah, but still, by law, everybody, you hear somebody, that's assault. You know, it don't even matter where it go. You could be a janitor, <laughs> you know what I mean, with the pizza maker. And if you hit them, you're going to jail. It's assault by law. A boxer's hands could be considered lethal weapons in a court of be. law if used to inflict serious damage to another person. But in general, a boxer doesn't need to register their hands as a lethal weapon because there's no law requiring it. Registering parts of your body as lethal weapons aren't true to me. Okay, so it's actually bullshit. Told you. <laughs> I just told you, man. The worst thing you gotta remember with fighting a boxer is that you got to wake up and remember what the fuck happened. <laughs> Hope you still can remember how the whole shit went down. And you could tell, you know, tell the shit when you get up. No, for real, that's real talk. Like to run yeah. up on a boxer that you know is a boxer, like a world champion fighter, and try to fight him. That's silly. That's silly. Silly. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. 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 Remember, remember uh, when Mitch <laughs> yes. Green tried to try to run up on Tyson? That's different. That's They're another, both boxers. They both boxers. They both yes. know how to defend themselves. Right. I guarantee he ran up on it. They both jumped back and squared up. You know what I'm saying? It was different. But it, Mike, I mean, Mike was different. Mike was from Brownsville. Mike, they, we with the shit. We sneak attacks, all that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Whatever. See, yeah, I remember seeing Mitch Green's eye after that. It was like, oof. Broke his socket. 
He broke oh, the eye happened? socket. Yeah. He broke his eye socket. Yeah. The eye socket. You got to hit really hard to do some shit like that, right? Sheesh. Sheesh. Okay. That's a that's a hell of a credential to have on your resume, right? And for a motherfucker to still run up on you like, yo, I just broke a dude's eye socket. I broke the fucking, I cracked the eye socket. In it. And you can Google it. You can see the crack and everything. He cracked the skull. Hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Well, remember when you were here last time? And we talked about boxing versus MMA. Mm-hmm. And you said it's different because boxing you feel is more skilled than mm-hmm. MMA. Mm-hmm. I interviewed, you know, MMA. Uh, well, I don't say skill. I say it's more of a skillful. More of a skill. Skillful, okay. yeah. It's a skillful situation. Well, after that, I interviewed, you know, MMA legend Don Fry. Mm-hmm. Do you know who that is? Briefly heard of him. Vaguely, vaguely. He, he, was, he was big in like the 80s, 90s, okay. and okay. so forth. Uh, I brought up the statement that you made. Mm-hmm. And uh, he didn't say very nice things about you. That's okay. Can I can I play it for you? Of course. Yeah, I remember when I interviewed Zab Judah, and I asked him that same question about boxing being a dying sport compared to MMA. He agreed as well, and he said the reason why is because he feels that MMA is a lot more violent, whereas boxing he feels as as a former, you know, multi you know championship you know world champion himself, he feels that boxing is a lot more technical. You know what I'm saying? Like. You're, you're trying, you know, two guys standing against each other and, and they're doing everything within their power to not get hit and not, you know, not get caught with a particular punch. Whereas when MMA is just a lot more violent and a lot more exciting to the people that are watching. Boxing is a hand-to-hand skill. It's a skill. It's a two dynamite athletes in top condition trying to defuse each other, trying to make him... How do I make him drop his 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 defense so I can land my shot right here? The and the and the, uh, the wrestling thing is if I get into you and I get my hand around your throat, I could choke you the fuck out. It's over. You know what I'm saying? Like it's nothing you can do. If I get my hand around your throat, I, you could be the strongest, best guy. But if I get a get you in a vulnerable thing, I'm you're gonna you're gonna tap out. And boxing, yeah. I got a chance to. You know you know what I'm saying? I mean like you know what I'm saying? It's different. It's different. It's a whole different skill level. Boxing is a skill. MMA is, is, is a barbaric hoax. Do I like it? I love it. I love it. I, am I a fan of MMA? I'm a fan of MMA. No, that's for, that? who, that's for somebody who doesn't understand what the fuck he's watching. You know, to sit there and say something like that. That's a stupid ass comment. I don't even know who the hell you're talking about, but he's a dumbass. <laughs> I, I kind of thought that Don would be a little passionate about that, the reply. I thought, I, I kept looking for him. stupid comment. You know, I... Uh, the, 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 I'll just jump in. There. There's a whole lot more activity. You want to keep watching? Or? No, it sounds like he didn't even comment into my comment. Because there's no one in the world he could have comment. He could have said what he said to that, to my comment. That don't make sense. He didn't actually see the interview. I didn't play it for him. Right. I, right. I just, you, you saw what I mentioned. He, just, yeah, that was just, and he doesn't well, actually know who you I are. Think that, I think that what happened was you said it to him. You didn't break it down to him correctly of how I said it. Fair so enough. So he took it away of how, he, of how you said it to him. Of course, his, his, based on the way you broke it down to him, his comment was accurate. You know what I mean? So no, you know, big shout out to you, big homie. It's all love. There you go. True gentleman right there. Of course. Exactly. True gentleman. Yeah. Well, since our last interview, I interviewed uh, Riddick Bo, mm-hmm. which was an absolute honor for me to do. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Brownsville, actually, right? Yeah. Bo, Bo and, uh, and Tyson actually knew each other in high school mm-hmm. and kind of kind of came up together, but never fought. Number one, what do you think would have happened? Because, I mean... From what I understand, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Tyson went to jail, went to prison, and that's when you kind of had the, the Riddick Bowes start to come up during that time. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that right? I don't know. I, I think, I think that's, that, that, was, that was the whole thing. That, that's when Holyfield started to really do his thing. Riddick Bowes started to do his thing. Um, but the two of them never fought. If you look at Tyson during that era and Riddick Bow during that era, what do you think would have happened if they got in the ring? I don't do the fantasy match. I don't, don't do know. the fantasy match. No fantasy match. 
Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. What did you think about the trilogy fights between Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield? Amazing. Oh, man. Excellent to watch. <laughs> if you have a board night one night, go watch Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe. Pick it. Out of three fights, pick them. It's bad. Amazing fights. Amazing. In fact, there was that one tenth round. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. There was a tenth round. I talked to him about this, and we'll, we'll play the clip of him talking about it. It's considered the greatest round in boxing history. Mm. That tenth round in that fight, explain to me what happened. Well, Ivana wanted to prove that he was the best, and I had the opportunity to prove that I was the best, and nobody wanted to give up. So that's why the fight became one of the greatest all rounds, one of the greatest rounds in heavyweight history. Yeah. Uh, Al Bernstein, the commentator, said exactly that. That was one of the greatest rounds in heavyweight history, period. Without question. Right, because you were just brutalizing him in the start of the 10th round, and everyone thought it was over, but he actually... Made a comeback. The, he had a comeback, and he, he got some punches in on you. Mm -hmm. And you know his, his whole face was swollen up. He had big black eyes and everything else like that. But, I tightened him I up. Mean, I was tightening oh, yeah. him up. No, I mean, it just showed, like, just two incredible warriors. Yeah, he came to fight. It. No question about it. Would you say that? Yeah. I would say so. Could be one of them. One of them. The what about his fight with him and Andrew Galata? You can't forget that. But that oh was just ridiculous. God. That was... <laughs> that well, both was, fights. Yo, son, amazing. No, no, ladies and gentlemen, Riddick Bo and Andrew Galata. Watch that fight. Pick one. <laughs> but, I didn't, I didn't, but you like those fights? Yeah. I mean, I mean, he hit him below the belt. It doesn't matter. It's just Galata was winning. He didn't have to do that. Yeah, I think I think he has some sort of brain damage. Yeah, he, was just... <laughs> he might be mentally retarded or, or some shit. Galata was kind of winning. He was winning a fight. And, and then he, he just yo, hit him he, with a two-piece in the testicles and like. Yo. Yeah, but that was crazy. Remember, then the whole arena went crazy. Oh yeah, Riddick's camp jumped in. So he, I think Galata got hit with a cell phone in the head oh, or man. I mean, really, like, Amazing. it almost seemed like Riddick Bo had more just ridiculousness happen in the ring than I think any other fighter. He had someone parachute into his damn boxing yeah, match. That wasn't his fault, though. I know. I, I'm not saying it's his fault. Right. He was doing, like, it wasn't, like, it's never something he did. That it's, Brownsville energy followed him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, yo, someone Word. literally got on a plane, jumped out of the plane over the arena, and parachuted almost into the ring and stopped the whole fight. Well, he was trying to make history. He was just trying to do some stupid shit because his thing was to land in the middle of the ring and, like, you know, become, like, you know. Instead, he just got his ass beat by the crowd really badly. He just missed it, though. He, he missed he it. Just he missed did it. A, he, he did just a good job. It. He just missed it. Well, he remember? said, well, you see, he did a, there's a story about that. He did a story about that. It's just, the guy's on, I think, 60 Minutes or something. Oh, oh, the, the parachute? Yeah, he did it. It's a story I about that. You that. can watch it. And he say, because of the oining, that's why he couldn't get all the way in the ring. Huh. Yeah. The awning. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because remember, there was that other fight that happened. When uh, Rock Newman ended up grabbing the other fighter by the neck and pulling him out. Remember that? Like, this is what I'm saying. It's just a bunch of craziness that, that just happened in, in a lot of his fights. Like, but it wasn't his fault. It wasn't anything Bo, he did. Bo, Bo had that brown. He, brown he, he, he took that energy. <laughs> Do you know Rick Bo personally? Yes. Good my dude. Guy. That's my guy. Good dude. That's my guy. You ever hit you with the Umama jokes? No? Uh, Maybe... <laughs> 90 billion times. I heard I probably heard every joke he got. <laughs> well, was, uh, well, one of the one of the what I feel is the very interesting part of our interview is that Riddick Bowe, during the course of his career, made 80 million dollars mm -hmm. and ultimately went bankrupt. He said that his manager, Rock Newman, stole 15 million dollars from him. He ended up driving a bus at one point. Not to say that he needed to, but it was like he just said, fuck it, and just wanted a regular life at one point, just drove a bus for a while. Who? Riddick Bo. Oh. Yeah. I asked if anyone recognized him. He said no. You're someone who's had money stolen from you. You know, we talked about the whole Don King situation. 
from your point of view as a professional boxer, and you know, we, we've talked about it, you know, in your interview with Tyson, we, we talked about it, and you, you've seen this happen a lot of times. Does this surprise you that you can make $80 million in the ring and end up with nothing? Surprise? No. Explain. His lifestyle. Follow his story. Lifestyle. Give me an example. Kid out of Brownsville, they passed the bag over to him. But the bag kept coming. Duffel bags. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know. You ask me, could it happen? Yes. Do I, could I see it happen? Yes. Have I seen it happen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, he, he's doing okay now. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that he's, no, he's, he's hurting good. for money. Nah, I mean, nah, nah, Bo's all right. Bo but chill. Bo's okay. But mm -hmm. not as okay as I feel he should be. You know, like for example, Larry Holmes, I think is in much better shape, financial mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. You know, Larry Holmes, I think at one point really was like, Larry okay, Holmes. Eastern Pennsylvania. He's the That's king. My guy. The, the Eastern Holmes. assassin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Larry Holmes went and bought office buildings. He bought restaurants, owns a massive house. There's a statue of him in, in a city. He, uh, you know, he invested money. He was ahead of his time. He was ahead of his time. He, he made. He, he tapped in. Yeah. He never really got ripped off. Always, you know, even though he dealt with Don King. Never, never said that Don King ever ripped him off. I mean, he made money with Don King. Uh, you know, he, he's still, you know, still financially very, very well off. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just hurts to hear someone go through, you know, really sacrificing your body mm -hmm. for your family and everything else like that. And to come out broke after that, it really, it shook me up. But you've seen it a lot. Yeah happen when you start making that kind of money i mean obviously there's the lifestyle but then there is the people the, the leeches the the ripoff artists you know for example i interviewed uh well i didn't do the interview myself but we did an interview with uh the football players ricky williams mm -hmm. you know who that is mm -hmm. ricky williams you know years after he retired his financial advisor stole his entire life savings Wow. Three million dollars. She also ripped off Dennis Rodman and everything else like that. She's now in prison. The money was never recovered. And he's not. He said, "Oh, that's okay. You know, it's just money. I'm not. I'm not really tripping." I know money is not a big driver for you. You have made that perfectly clear during this interview. Yeah. But uh, six, eight million dollars being stolen—that's life changing. People have been killed, murdered for a whole lot less. I, I find it interesting that you could compliment this woman in any way, shape, or form because it, it's not just Ricky Williams. It's your legacy. It's your children. But my children, are, but but they're fine. But they're all fine though. That that's kind of that's kind of my point. And I think when people buy into and again, I, I don't want to take money is important. We need it to live. But when we buy into that, money is 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 more valuable than just helping us survive, I think that's when we get in trouble. And even I, I, that I was fine, right? That I have then when I found out and now that, that I have all the resources and the things that I need to be able to take care of myself. And you know, and the, I'm really, really good because I've, I've part of my story, right? A lot of roller coasters, ups and downs. So I'm really, really good at bouncing back from adversity. But you see this story all the time. Like when you start making money, outside of the Don King story that we talked about, were there other people that were ripping you off? Like, nah, just Don. No. No, no, not just Don. It wasn't like it was just Don. Like it was just like, you know, it's just business. And business people, everybody's not um, upstanding. Yeah. You know, you're going to meet, you know, people that, you know, they appear as something else that they're not. So you've had other people like this? Yeah. It's business. Okay. How long did it take you to really understand money and what to do with your money? Um, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, it wasn't no class for me, man. I went from bang, bang, rag the riches. Just keep, just, keep, just keep moving, you know? You just keep going. It really no no different. You just go from... 
the bucket, get out the bucket, get into the good car with the good clothes on, yeah. going into the good building, <laughs> eating the good food. It's it's just, you know same shit, but you you just you know pick it up a little bit. That's it. And as you go and go, you go, you go, you go. And then what happens is a lot of times people meet people and they see lifestyle. They see a they see a certain lifestyle, and they look at it like, oh my god, you know, because you're able to do it a couple times. You know what I'm saying? You like, I gotta do this forever. And you blow your little bag, fuck with that bag over there. You know what I mean? <laughs> And then you fucked up again, so, you know. The, the one story I heard after we did the Tyson interview that I wish I had learned before was uh, before one of Tyson's boxing matches, he went to the Lamborghini shop and bought a Lamborghini. Bought it in cash. Drove it off the lot, went to the hotel, and ended up bumping it, you know, basically bumping it into something and, and having like a small little accident where he like had a fender bender or something. Mm -hmm. He gets out of the car and says, this car is bad luck. Looks at the valet, said, here, take it. Throws the keys to the valet. And the valet is looking at the keys and Don King is there like, yo man, take the car, he's giving it to you. And that was the end of that he gave a valet a brand new Lamborghini mm. because he felt it was bad luck at that very moment. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> but this is I what I that mean. that valet guy was happy. <laughs> and you had a Lamborghini yourself, so you you, you understand how, how big of a prize that is. If that is a story, I mean, I never heard that before, but... Oh, you never heard that, sir? No. If that is a story, mm. Champ is feeling like that. He's, feel, he's in a good mood. <laughs> well, what, I mean, when you were just bringing in bags on top of bags of money, what was like the craziest shit that you were spending? Oh money on? man, crazy shit, bro! Can you Stop, Vlad. We ain't gonna start this shit. No. Vlad <laughs> <laughs> like trying to get me like, come on, Zab, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you had the Lambo at one point. You know, you cars. had the crazy jewelry yeah, at one point. Of cars. You know, you you did your thing. You, you, As you a champion, you should. Yeah. You know? 25 years in the game, six time champ of the world. Yeah, I mean, I, I really wish that when it comes to, you know, because in, in like the NBA, the NFL, there is like a players association, mm -hmm. you know, that they give you financial education if, mm -hmm. if you're interested in it. You know, there, there's people that are looking out for you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a league that, that wants you to continue and, and be okay and so forth. Boxing is not like that. Yeah. I feel like boxing, they, they want you to burn out. They, well, they, they I don't want think they you. want you to burn out. I think that, you know, they expect that, you know, they, they pay you well, so they expect that, you know, with your money, you be mindful of your future, you know what I mean? Of all your surroundings and things like that. And I think that for for those of us, and I say us because athletes too, mm -hmm. for, those of, for those of us athletes that, don't mindfully consider the information that's shared with us, we'll learn later. The if, that if that makes sense. The hard but way. you will learn. <laughs> yeah, but it's too bad that like, for example, you don't have like an organization within boxing that really has like, okay, look, here is financial advisors that we're co-signing. Mm -hmm. You know, these are guys that, that we vetted out that have worked with other boxers that is gonna sit down with you and say, okay, look, you got $10 million, number one, you're gonna to have to pay your taxes. Mm. Okay, so just take 50% of that and let's just pay the government right now mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about it later. Okay, boom. All right, you got five million left. What well, that's supposed to come with your management. Good management should, should help take care of that, should advise, should at least point you in the right direction. I'm your manager, I got, I'm here to manage your life. Your career, your everything. Wait, okay. I know I just paid my taxes. Let me call my fighter. Hey, did you pay your taxes? Or call your peoples and tell them to pay your taxes. I mean, when you first went so, pro, did you have good management? Um, yeah. 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 So you had guys that actually... I had um, Shelly Finkel and Lou Duva. Aha. Okay. And they took care of you? No complaints. 
Shelly, whole thing was in the beginning was, you know, give me all your worries, all your whatever your bills are, your worries, whatever you, because only thing you are should and be able to do is go to gym and train. Go to school, and go to gym. Go to school, go to gym. It was, it was my last year of school because I was I was eighteen. I turned pro at eighteen. Mm. So it was my last year of high school. Cause I had to have a, uh, I had a, uh, a tutor from traveling all the time for boxing. So, on my 18th year, I was going through my stuff and I had my uh, situation going on. And right when I finished, I turned pro. And I was rocking and rolling. Well, you have how many kids there? Eight. Eight kids. Yeah. How many boys? How many girls? Four or four. Four or four. Yeah. Now, two of them are are, are little. Well, how how old are your oldest? 26, 24. Okay. Have any of them gone into any sort of martial arts? Mm. Not a single one. No, because these days you have boys and girls who could do it. My boys is my boys is the youngest now. So they 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 uh they like they like boxing. Okay. The oldest is 12. Boy, right now. Do you want your kids to go into boxing? It's a very tough uh, competitive sport. Yes. So they would have to show me that they want to do it. Would I stop them and say, no, you can't box? No, never do that. If they you come to did. me and show me with the ability that, you know, I mean, I know what it takes to be a fighter. So if they come and just show me, you know, they're enthused and they really want to do it and they put in the training in. Like, Fuck yeah, I'm going to support them. I mean, do you feel that you just sort of have to be born a certain type of way? in order to be a champion boxer? Or do you think you could take almost anybody and mold them into that? Yeah, anybody could be molded into a champion. Into a champion, not not just the middle of the, a world champion. Yeah. Anyone. Yeah. You don't think that your body shape, your natural muscular tone, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of dudes- that could become, you can, you can sculpt that. You could sculpt that. Yeah, that's So you're right. saying anyone could do it. All right, you can take a kid that's coming like this and he literally Jane like this. Huh. <laughs> right, because there's weight class at the end of the day. It's yeah, not like you got to fight fucking diesel, 200 right? pounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's not okay. a problem. Okay. You can scope that. Mindset, you have to just be in his mind. Just transform the mind. That go with environment. You know what I'm saying? Uh, atmosphere. You know, surroundings. People don't understand, like, you know, they keep sending kids to school and to daycare and to and camp and shit. And they can't come back with a whole different personality. And like, how the hell is this happening? How do they learn this shit? Yeah, them little six hours, eight hours they got out there with them, with them other kids, they turning up. Well, I interviewed Riddick Bo, like I said. And, you know, recently I was watching, there's a, a Mike Tyson documentary series, I think on Hulu or, or something like that. And there was a short clip of Riddick Bowe when he went to go visit Tyson in prison. And the Riddick Bowe that I heard speak in that interview, and this was, you know, sometime in the 90s, to the Riddick Bowe I interviewed was a very different person in terms of his overall speech. Mm. Riddick Bowe definitely slurs a lot of his words now. Um, you know, and I've, I've interviewed other boxers uh, that, you know, seem like they have some effects, like some some CTE type effects from boxing. Number one, did you worry at all about CTE when you were boxing? Mm -mm. It doesn't usually affect, you know, guys in your weight class as much. Usually the heavyweights are the ones that, that catch it the worst, you know, like the Muhammad Ali's and everything else like that. See, I grew up around Pernan Whitaker. Aha. Who was doing this? Who was... <laughs> We wasn't doing no taking no punches. So. I mean, would that be at all a concern with your kids? That if if they wanted to box, you'd worry about the CTE aspect of it. I, I'm right there with them. We're gonna learn. <laughs> gonna learn how to <laughs> we're do gonna it. go back to this. You know, we're gonna we're gonna get nice. Yeah. You know, the less punishment you take, the longer you stay around. Yeah. It's a known fact. I, I feel you. Right. And your dad was a boxer already. Yep. But he never achieved the heights. That you yeah, he was no, no well, he didn't achieve because he, he wasn't a boxer. But in kickboxing, my dad was yeah. Just, like, yeah, he was big in kickboxing. He was a top, top guy. He named right. him go, ask all the guys. He was a top. Yep. Yeah, but kickboxing. 
it wasn't as big as boxing. Dollars. No way. Than traditional. Boxing. That's why he never put us in boxing. I mean, in kickboxing. kickboxing. He said, if I'm, if I'm going to do anything with my boys, we're going to do boxing. And we went to the boxing room. Right. Did you want to go into kickboxing, though, like personally? No. No. Mm. Your dad always mm. had already had yeah. <laughs> dad I really had no interest. It's really a hard, you know, I was like kind of a clumsy kid anyway, so I didn't have the coordination to kick and punch. So <laughs> none of that shit worked for me. Yeah. I was good with the hands. <laughs> yeah, none of that worked for me. That's dope, man. That, that's dope. I yeah. mean, it, it seems like when you see these uh, these phenomenal boxers, it's usually because of their families early on. You know, you, I mean, Tyson was sort of adopted, you know, by, by Custom Auto mm-hmm. kind of early on. But when you look at people like you, you look at the Mayweathers and so forth, it's already, it's already a family tradition. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all just take it, you know, to the next level, to the next level with the shit. But, you know, you, you rarely see someone who starts boxing at like 15 and becomes a world champion. Right? Right. Um, yeah. But no Hopkins. No oh, Hopkins was 20, 25. Really? Came from jail. He had no amateur background. Yeah, I think you're right. That's why he's still around now. Yeah. He was preserved in the penitentiary. Came out rock strong and went right professional. Now, I remember I, I interviewed before we launched Vlad TV when I still do doing DVDs. Um, I did an interview at his house. In mm-hmm. Philly, and it was in a high rise, and it was like the you know the penthouse and the high rise, and we sat down. I started doing the interview, and he goes, "Yo, man, let me show you something. Look out the window. You see see that right there? That's the jail I used to be in. I look down on that shit every day to remind me where I came from. Mm. B hop. Mm. That's gangster. That's gangster. I ain't gonna front. He, he, went, he purposely." And like, I mean, it's Bernard Hopkins, you know, he can live anywhere he wants. Yeah. Like he purpose, I feel like he purposely chose to live in a building facing the jail that he used to be in when, when he was. It's in chill, you know, that's, I mean, that's crazy, but I, would, I mean, I wouldn't want to do that. I don't want to see that fucking shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I wouldn't want to see that. Just looking at it every day now. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's some kind of discipline to have, you know what I'm saying, to look at and remember. You don't want to end up back in there. You know what I mean? So, yeah, kind of more kosher. Well, you have how many kids now? Eight. Eight kids. Yeah. How many boys, how many girls? Four or four. Four or four? Yeah. Now, two of them are, are, are little. Well, how, how old are your oldest? 26, 24. Okay. Have any of them gone into any sort of martial arts? Mm. Not a single one. Because you know, these days you have boys and girls who could do it. My boys is my boys is the youngest thing. So they 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 uh they like they like boxing. Okay. The oldest is twelve. Boy, right now. Do you want your kids to go into boxing? It's a very tough uh competitive sport. Yes. So they will have to show me that they wanna do it. When I stop them and say, No, you can't box, no. Never do that. If they you come to me and show me with the ability that, you know, I mean, I know what it takes to be a fighter. So if they come and just show me, you know, they enthuse and they really want to do and they put in the training. All right, fuck yeah, I'm gonna support them. I mean, do you feel that you just sort of have to be born a certain type of way in order to be a champion boxer, or do you think you could take almost anybody and mold them into that? Yeah, anybody could be molded into a champion. Into a champion, not not just the middle of the a world champion. Yeah, anyone. Yeah, you don't think that your body shape, your natural muscular tone, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of dudes that could become you can you can sculpt that. You could sculpt that. Yeah, that's so you're fine. saying anyone could do it. All right, you could take a kid that's coming like this and he lady Jane like this, huh? <laughs> Right, because there's weight class at the end of the day. It's yeah, not like you got to fight fucking diesel, 200 right? pounds. Yeah. yeah, that's not okay. a problem. Okay. You can scope that. Mindset, you have to just be in his mind. Just transform the mind. That go with environment, you know what I'm saying? Uh, atmosphere, you know, surroundings. People don't understand, like, you know, they keep sending kids to school and to daycare and, to, and camp and shit. 
And they kid come back with a whole different personality. And like, how the hell is this happening? How do they learn this shit? Yeah, them little six hours, eight hours they got out there with them, with them other kids, they turning up. Well, I interviewed Riddick Bo, like I said. And, you know, recently I was watching, there's a, a Mike Tyson documentary series, I think on Hulu or, or something like that. And there was a short clip of Riddick Bo when he went to go visit Tyson in prison. And the Riddick Bo that I heard speak in that interview, and this was, you know, sometime in the 90s, to the Riddick Bo I interviewed was a very different person in terms of his overall speech. Mm. Riddick Bo definitely slurs a lot of his words now. Um, you know, and I've, I've interviewed other boxers uh, that, you know, seem like they have some effects, like some, some CTE type effects from boxing. Number one, did you worry at all about CTE when you were boxing? Mm. It doesn't usually affect, you know, guys in your weight class as much. Usually the heavyweights are the ones that, that catch it the worst, you know, like the Muhammad Ali's and everything else like that. See, I grew up around Pernan Whitaker. Aha. We was doing this. We, was, <laughs> we wasn't doing no taking no punches. So. I mean, would that be at all a concern with your kids? If, if they wanted to box, you'd worry about the CTE aspect of it. I, I'm right there with them. We're going to learn. We're going to go back to this. You know, we're going we're gonna to get nice. Yeah. You know, the less punishment you take, the longer you stay around. Yeah. It's a known fact. I feel you. Well, on your arm is an outlaw tattoo. Yeah. Can you can we get a, a close-up shot of it real quick? Tell me the story behind that outlaw tattoo. Um, went one day and got a tattoo. <laughs> what you want? <laughs> what, you, what you want to have? Like, what? I mean, is it is it a Tupac outlaw tattoo? Yeah, yeah, it's a famo. Okay. Yeah. So you had a relationship with Tupac? No, I wouldn't say that. No. No. Your relationship with the outlaws? No, we have the family, yes. Okay. Who in the outlaws? Hmm? Who in the outlaws are you close to? Um, AD. Yeah, that's my man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very Everybody. good, very good friend of mine, actually. Yeah. I, I just did his podcast the other day. Mm hmm Okay. Mm -hmm. We seen you on it. Yeah. Yeah. We seen you. Did a good job. Thank you. Wore a suit that time. We show up. I've seen you. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled out my Dolce Gabbana, you know yeah, what I mean? I'll see you. Sure. Um, so are you officially an outlaw member? Got to ask. No, I ain't no, I ain't no outlaw. I ain't no rapper. I'm gonna wrap him up though. <laughs> you know my thing. Nah, nah. I went. Um, my outlaw, my outlaw thing. I did mine in Brooklyn. Mine was from Brooklyn. You know, saying something that it was my movement that I did in New York City, in Brooklyn. Yeah. You know, Young Noble just had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. You heard about that? Yeah. He's actually younger than me. He's 43. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just kind of shows how uh, how important your health is. 100%, bro. You know, Don't play with it. That was, to me, scary that a guy younger than me, who seemed like he's in relatively good shape. Yeah, it's he's not in like good he was too. obese and, yeah. you know, like, you don't expect someone like a, like a noble to have a heart attack. But, I mean, he almost died. I mean, in fact, he had to have two operations to clear his, uh, his arteries mm. to avoid any future heart attacks. Um, that's a that's a rough one, man. Because I feel like as we get older, we don't. A lot of people just don't take their health seriously. They don't go mm -hmm. see the doctor. They don't get their tests. The most I, I the most I got him. Yeah, I, he he ain't good hands. That's why he's there. Yeah, I mean, I, I recently found out I had uh, you know high cholesterol, mm. and I had to get on medication because the doctor was basically like, "Yo, you you in a heart attack zone with what your cholesterol is at the time." Mm -hmm. I didn't even know. Mm. So we got to take care of ourselves as we get older, man. Word. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of health, we lost a boxing legend since last time. Marvelous Marvin Hagler passed mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. at the age of 66. Did you know Hagler at all? Yep. Were you guys close? Not close, but I know him. He was one of my idols. Really? Mm -hmm. How'd you feel when he died? I mean, 66 is not old at all. Mm -hmm. Not not these days. When you heard about his death, what, how'd you feel? Sad. He's a good guy. I remember um, one year we was at the uh, uh, Boxing Hall of Fame. 
and we um I got the, that's the year that I really got to meet him and we rode together on the bus together. We had went far, so a far trip. It was like an hour and a half ride. I got to sit there and chop, chop it up with him and talk with him and we got to know each other a little bit. And um, we changed numbers and kept our relationship from there. Yeah. yeah. Good guy though, good guy. What did you think of Thomas Hearns putting out the fake news that uh, that Hagler actually died after he took the COVID vaccine. I never heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. We we accidentally reported on it because Thomas Hearns was like, oh, he just died because he just took the vaccine and it killed him. But the two of them had been like, were kind of arch enemies, weren't they? I don't know. Yeah. Thomas mm -hmm. Hearns and Marvin Hagler. That was before my time. Before. Yeah. Both of yeah. our time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you been vaccinated? Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we good. We good around here. Me too. What do you think about people who are like the anti-vaxxers and who, who say that the government's tracking you or or so forth? I don't know. I don't get into none of that stuff. I don't get into that. I don't Fair get enough. into that. Fair enough. Last question. You were actually raised Jewish. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you still Jewish or are you converted at one point? Yo, we, we are humans, baby. We're all humans. Yo, everything. What do you think about what's happening with Israel and Palestine right now? Sad. Very sad. Sad. And, um, it's just sad when you watch, no matter about the countries, and the, it's just people. It's real people dying. It was sad. It's sad. I mean, I wish it can come to a stop in, in, a, in a halt, but... It's been going on for a long time. This is history, 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 yeah. history. Before we were born. Yeah, before we was born. And, you know, it's just sad for it to be right here in front of our face and, on, like, on our timeline right now, and you knowing that they bombing and killing and kids and, and women and innocent people are just passing away. And it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah, I mean, my whole life, Israel and Palestine have been going at it. Yeah. My, my whole life. Have you been to Israel? Huh? Have you been to Israel? No, I haven't been to Israel. I've been three times. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the reality is Israel's not going anywhere. Israel is a very developed country. Skyscrapers, corporations, you know, it, it's universities and so forth. It is what it is. Um, you know, and the Palestinian people uh, aren't going anywhere either. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they have, you know, their homeland and they have their ties and so forth. And, you know, I personally, you know, although I, you know, I'm a supporter of Israel, I'm not a supporter of what the government's doing. And the fact that they raided like the third holiest mosque in the Muslim religion on the final days of Ramadan mm -hmm. that ultimately triggered all this violence, I, just, I, I can't support that. And I think a lot of people feel that you know, saying that you don't support the Israeli government means you're anti-Semitic. And I, I disagree with that. You know what I mean? Just like saying, if you don't support Trump, you're anti-American. Like, nah, like you could hate Trump and still be pro-American. You could not like the Israeli government and what they do and still be pro-Jewish. You know what I'm saying? And as, as a Jew myself, I'm very conscious of it. But, you know, it, it's just, it is upsetting that, yo, they're like, you know, the war that's happening over there and, you know, the Palestinians are launching missiles into Israel and then the Israelis are turning around and bombing buildings and women and kids and people who aren't even soldiers are, are yeah. getting caught up in the shit and they're all dying. And, you know, as someone who's been to Israel, like the people is over this shit. The people are like, yo, just give them whatever land they want. Like, we got enough over here. We good. Like, yo, just give them back. This. If this is the piece of land that everyone's fighting for, the West Bank or whatever, just give it to them. We done. Like, we can go on. Everyone could just go on living their own lives, having their own states and then their own governments. But, but do you think that's going to happen? I don't think under the current administration. I don't think under Netanyahu. Because, I mean, I took a tour through Israel. All, all through Israel. And we had, even went into Palestine and had dinner with Palestinian families and, and got to learn both sides of the story. Um, you know, the problem with Netanyahu is that his brother got killed fighting Palestinians. 
So he has a, a chip on his shoulder when it comes to that shit. Mm. You know? Um, you know, at one point, there was a peace process that was happening, I think, in the 80s with the Prime Minister R- Rabin, who actually shook hands with Arafat, and, and they were starting to really, like, fix things. And then uh, a right-wing Jewish kid ended up killing Rabin. Mm. You know, because what had happened was, you know, and this, and this happens everywhere, you know, extremists on both sides. Essentially, what was happening was this, this, young, this young Jewish kid was going around and meeting with all these really, like, right-wing rabbis. And he was saying, you know, there's a, there's a, a rule in the Torah that says that if a Jew kills other Jews, then they should be killed. And, you know, the prime minister's policies are killing Jews, so he should be killed. And some of the rabbis are like, yeah, you know, technically you're right. So he took it upon himself to basically kill the prime minister during a public gathering, like literally in front of everybody, just executed him right there, mm. you know, and then everything fell apart. You know what I'm saying? And then mm. the people that replaced him really weren't down to really work it out with Palestine. And here we are 40 years later, you know, and, and in Israel, when you reach, I think, 18 years old, you got to join the military and you got to go fight. Crazy. So you see a lot of families, you, you know, I've known of Israeli families that come over here when their kids are like 14, 15, so they can avoid their kids potentially getting killed, you know, in, in warfare because there's still active warfare over there. Mm. You know, and it's rough, man. You know, me being Jewish, you being Jewish, it's like you, you, you see the shit that, that people say and, you know, you see the way that things are portrayed and everything else like that. And, and there's no great answer for it, but I, I do hope at one point it gets worked out. Now you have your own Celebrity Boxing League. Okay. Let's talk about that. What's the name of it? Celebrity Championship Boxing. Okay. Who owns it? Uh, myself. Me. Okay. Do you have any partners or just yourself? Yep. Me and my wife. You and your wife. Got it. Any investors? Yep. Got it. Yep. Can you say who or is that kind of private business? Private business. Fair enough. When is this officially launching with its first event? Uh, we launched already. April, April 3rd. April 3rd. April 3rd, we launched already. We are on Fight TV. You can go there and watch what we put together already. Uh, if you're looking for information about what the Celebrity Championship Boxing, the CelebrityChampionshipBoxing.com. You check it out. Okay, so when you launched on April, what, what were the fights? Uh, we had, um, we had uh, Big Don. He fought Smack for Cash. It was a celebrity uh, reality stars, reality stars, hip hop rappers. Uh, we had the little the little women of Atlanta. They okay. fought. Uh, they had um, Shaquille O'Neal came out. A lot of uh, little scrappy, a safari. A lot of um, hip hop artists came out. It was dope. Okay. It was dope. But you got a bigger event coming up. We got a big one. Let's talk about that one. Um. Yeah. Well, um. It's still premature, of like you. <laughs> that always go crazy with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can cut this out of the footage if you want. Yeah. From what yeah, I understand, yeah. isn't Raz B supposed to fight? No, that that was over. That's done already. Oh, that's been done already. He fought on the last one. It was there. Okay. Yeah. What happened in that fight? He lost. He lost. Yeah. Who did he fight? He fought um Young Steph out of Philly. Young Steph was one of the um, youngest artists signed to Rockefeller. Aha. Okay. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. My bad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I missed the event. So Rasby already fought. Yeah, Rasby already fought. Okay. He already fought. Those guys already fought. Okay. But you can't say who's up next. Nope. Can't say it. Is it going to be bigger than Rasby? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, man. Listen. But Big Don, Big Don was the main event. You know, Big Don from, from um, Black Ink. Okay. From Chicago. Okay. Big guy. He fought the guy smack for cash. And they fought. That was dope though. That was dope. They it was both... smacking though. Huh? It was smacking. No, they were boxing. Oh, it was boxing. No, you gotta watch it, Vlad. Okay, See, I got it. You ain't watch. watching my shit, Vlad. You I gotta, gotta watch, watch my shit. shit. You gotta man. send me a link, man. You gotta I'm gonna send, send you the link. link. I gotta, TV, see, I gotta see the link. Yeah. I, I got gotta it. I gotta see the link. <laughs> yeah, I mean listen, the, the the celebrity boxing thing, I feel like these days, I mean it's always been around. You know, like for example, I interviewed Melly Mel. Mm-hmm. And he had a celebrity boxing match with Willie D back in the mm-hmm. day. Do you remember that? Yeah. 
you know, there's a whole thing about Melly Mel claimed that Willie D headbutted him, which is why he got, you know, why he got knocked down. Mm -hmm. Willie D said, no, I did not <laughs> headbutt him. Did you watch that fight? No, I, I'm not, I don't. I think I've seen it. I don't. I think it's remember on YouTube. It. You, you yeah, can watch yeah. It. Remember you can watch it. I forgot what happened though. I mean, Jose Conseco. Yeah, Conseco I interviewed him before. recently. Yeah, he's he one too. Yeah. Well, he got he. You know, he he lost recently. Yeah. That's crazy. You know, uh, you know, and I just feel like these days. I mean, well, now with Mayweather, the celebrity boxing match is pretty much. It's not like a niche thing anymore. It's mm. now a mainstream thing. So mm. you expect it to go get bigger and bigger. Yeah. It's gonna get bigger and bigger. Zab Judah's in it. I'm the boss of this celebrity championship boxing. If you were to pick, we'll leave it with this question. If you were to pick one non-boxing celebrity that would fight in your league with a with an opponent of their choice, who would you put in that ring? Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, uh, Big Shaq. Big Shaq. CCB representative. Shaquille O'Neal. Big homie. There is a problem with this, though. What? Shaquille is just way too rich. <laughs> this is not about rich or poor. This is about... It's, it's really about a real cause here. You know what I'm saying? The real cause behind this is the gun violence. Put down the guns and lace up the gloves. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to put a halt to these kids out here grabbing a hammer, squeezing off crazy. You know what I mean? Try to... Try to just take it back to this right now. I mean, because... For people to say stop fighting, that's, forget about that. That's never going to happen. People are going to have differences, going to have disputes, but we need to take it to here because from here, you live another day. Here, we already know what happens. So it's a bigger cause here. The bigger cause is put down their guns and lace up the gloves. So will Big Shaq step in the ring and do that? I think so. Who would he box? I don't even know, man. That's the dilemma. <laughs> Yao Ming. Shaquille yeah, O'Neal versus Yao Ming. Because Shaquille O'Neal looks like a, you know, but Yao like Ming a little is guy not, next to Yao Ming. But Yao Ming is not, he's not, um, in no disrespect to him, but he's not excited enough. He's not, you he don't, he's just, Bro. he's very quiet. If he's a nice, throw, mellow, zen yes, guy. He's yes. a very, I, I get all that. Yeah, I get a, all that. He's not the kind of guy for that. I don't if think that. If you throw Shaquille O'Neal and Yao Ming into a boxing ring, the entire planet will be watching. Um, of course, but, but dude, <laughs> okay, let's let's realistically talk, Vlad. Do you think yeah. Yao Ming would step in the ring? I don't think Shaq and, would step in the ring. I think you're wrong. Shaq already fought. He fought Sugar Shane Mosley and Akazel Hoya. Look at it. Did he? Google. Google right now and watch this. Watch this right now. Okay. And you about to go. You about to go now. Okay. So Shaq versus Mosley. I'm getting. Yep. I'm giving Vlad information. You see this shit? This is big. Zab joke. Okay. Hold on. Okay. This is from 2010. Oh, just watch it. And Shaq tried to kill that motherfucker too. Shaq tried to knock him out. Okay. As I pulled it up and, and skimmed to the middle, Shaq is literally on his knees. <laughs> You, you gotta watch what he was doing, son. He was yo, he was <laughs> acting up, son. Word up. Shaquille O'Neal is fighting Mosley on his knees. Son, that's how confident and, and he throw, is. And throw punches Look at that. That's how on confident. And you gonna tell me he ain't gonna fight? What? Yes. <laughs> no, I mean you're right. I didn't My know about smoke, this. You're right. This Crazy. somehow, this somehow got past. I mean, listen, it's, it's 11 years old. So My you know, son that's Shaq a smoke, son. Early. Uh, yeah, you better watch you match him up with. I'm telling you. <laughs> 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 My son ain't no poop putt. <laughs> that man Harry. got on his knees and, and proceeded against to Sugar Shane Mosley. Now that takes a lot of heart. Come on, man, hurry <laughs> <Air> it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, uh, Mosley's no slouch. I mean, nah, he, he, he hurt man. Mayweather when he when he fought him. Mosley the man. Word. Big respect and shout out go to Sugar Shane Mosley. Oh yeah, he's he's yeah. he's one of the greats. He's guy. gonna go down yeah. as, as one of the greats. Yeah. I, I've interviewed him before. Cool 100. dude. Very but very cool the fight, dude. Shaq tried to murk him. Shaq came out. Shaq was really woo woo. I was, like, I was watching like, oh no, Shaq ain't playing, boy. He trying okay, to okay. Shaquille O'Neal versus who? Who would be the dream lineup for your mm. for your boxing league? Mm. Where he wouldn't have to get on his knees. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Dennis Rodman. Nah. Nah, I like Dennis Rodman. Dennis well, Rodman it, it, it's not about like or dislike. I mean, yeah. they all give well, a nah, check. I don't think that's the. I don't think nah, 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 nah. I think you had to do Shaq. I got one. 
I got one. I got one. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. I got one though. Yeah. Big Shaq Diesel, CCB. You know that. Charles Barkley. The two of them damn near fight on their show. The bug, man. <laughs> that's a dope show. I mean, that's a dope fight. But do you honestly think Charles would do it? No. No. Me either. Charles is <laughs> way too rich to be uh <laughs> doing what fighting and all that. Plus, I think that Charles wouldn't like the fact that he got to, you know, work out and be disciplined. And I don't think that he would take that. Yeah, I, I'm trying to just. Uh... It's a tough commitment. Tough, tough commitment. Tough, tough commitment, man. I, I don't listen, man. No disrespect to nobody. It's tough. People that step in the ring still and I watch what they go through and do, you know. I watch them. I'm like, I take my hat off to them. Like, man, respect. That's tough stuff. See, I'd want to see him. I'd want to see Shaq with like Whoa. a real boxer who's just wow, close wanna, to his size. So you just want to see Shaq get hurt? No, I know Shaq. Me so and Shaq why, are cool. No, why would you want to no. put Shaq in with a real boxer? I, 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 because I would want to see him get on his knees and box someone again. I mean, that, that's you someone. You want to see him get on his knees and do that? No, no. I want to see him box someone standing up. You know, no, but he actually, didn't do that the whole fight. Okay, look at him fight De La Hoya. Look, okay. I he mean, fought Oscar De La Hoya. Did he too. get on his knees? No, no. De La Hoya is what one fifty? It don't matter. He's a professional. What? What is he like? Ten time champion of the world? Some crazy shit. I, I'd want to see Shaq with like Tyson Fury. Why? It's not good. Tyson Fury is six nine. Tyson Fury is a real boxer. Two hundred seventy three. He's a real heavyweight champion exactly. of the world. Exactly. Boxer. Exactly. That's the unfair. It's unfair. Mayweather's stand fighting up. Logan Paul. I'm standing up for my man Shaq. <laughs> standing up. Standing up. You're not gonna bully my man Shaq. Little, little, okay. little, right. little Diesel stepping up. Okay. <laughs> well, what do you think would happen though in that ring with what? Tyson Fury and Shaq? Uh, that's, uh, that's unfair. It's unfair. Yeah, the man Tyson Fury is a boxer. He know how to jab, hook, flex, sit down. Shaq and Shaq don't really know how to do that. He's just now. So, I'm talking about name a celebrity. That he could fight. Celebrity fighter. Or another sports athlete. Not a fighter fighter. Dwayne Johnson. The Rock? Yes. Mm, that's a good one. I now, now ripped, like that. Good shape. Looks like he could get in the ring. What about Shaq and Hulk Hogan? No, Hulk Hogan's on his way out. No, 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 no. Okay, no. Hulk Hogan has to walk with a cane. Okay, I didn't walk. know that. I no, know. no, no, no. Like, I'm thinking I, still about the Hulk. No, 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 it's not. It's not. It's, it, 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 no. See, and I, right, because I, I remember going to a I'm wrestling about event. The Hulk, man. I remember going to a wrestling event and talking to the owner of the event, and he was saying how Hulk Hogan was literally using a walker back, you know, when oh he's off stage and the cameras aren't on, he, oh he could God. barely walk. He's been messed up so much. So, so the, the, that, that, would, that would not be a, a fair. A fair fight at all? No, nah, you're right. You know, yes, Hulk Hogan in his prime. You yeah, know, like yeah, in the Rocky yeah. movie. Yeah, okay. Hulkamania. Yeah, Hulkamania. No, but I'm talking about Hulk Hogan in 2021. Just be a mess. American. But The Rock, Dwayne Johnson versus Shaquille O'Neal. That'd be good. That'd be good. You think you think The Rock could do it? No. Why not? Hit 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 dude on live on a CCB. Too too rich. It's not about being rich. It's about the charity. He gonna stand up for the cause. Put down a gun, lace up the gloves. I mean, you know, I mean, his dad's a wrestler, right? So go. he kind of comes from, not to say wrestling and boxing is the same thing, but he comes from some level of martial arts type. Yeah, type I'm going to give him I'm gonna give him that jab from Zab. Don't worry about it. He's going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be good with it. Word up. I give it to I, him. I think, I think that's a... Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson, if you're watching this right now, yeah, we got a fight set up for you. You know, uh, my man Zab's, uh, you know, I'm new league. in with you. You know, I'm you versus Shaq. You, you know, Diesel. for a good cause. I got to find out do Big Diesel wouldn't do that, though. I think I think Shaq would definitely do it. Yeah? Shaq fighting The Rock? I think he would absolutely do it. 100%. Now, mm. The Rock would be, you know, The Rock probably wants to run for president at one point. Like, mm. you know? That would be good for his campaign. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say maybe Will Smith. He's also versus pretty who? good. Versus Shaq, but then Will Smith's no. only like 6'2". And, yeah, and not, that's not good. You know, not in the greatest shape anymore. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Nah, Will, that's why That's why I think The Rock would definitely. Nah, but Will fluctuates. Will, Will, Will fluctuates. And Will has a good discipline about himself. And Will knew that he has, whatever, seven, eight, nine weeks to train for Shaquille O'Neal. He'll, he'll try to get fit for it. 
I mean, there's Chris, uh, Chris Hemsworth, Thor. Have you seen him recently? No. He's Bunk huge. Oh, what? Yeah, his arms are massive. What? Yeah, the new Thor movie just, uh, you know, just wrapped up and he showed a picture suck. and his yeah. arms are like the size of my fucking torso. I think I wanted to reach out to him. Some good name. Thor versus Shaq? Shaq. Oh, yo, Diesel, we got somebody. We got action. Diesel, we got action. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Is there, any, is there anyone else? I mean, Schwarzenegger is too old at this point. Um, Tom Hardy? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, Sylvester Stallone is, is kind of too old. Yeah, I'm thinking The Rock. The Rock, Rock or Charles Barkley? I think that those are the two the two main competitors right there. Barkley. Barkley or The Rock? I just can't see Charles doing that. Nah. Fighting nah. Shaq. Who do you think will win that? Shaq. Shaq is the biggest human being I've ever met in my life. Let me let me just say, me and him did a mixtape back in the day. I remember at one point he dissed Kobe. On, on one of my mixtapes mm. <laughs> back in the day. Rest in peace, Kobe. That, that was back when they were having their little, their little issues. Uh, but I remember, you know, we, we got on the phone a few times and he sent me the, the verses and we put it out, whatever else. And then like maybe a year later, we went into each other at a club. And I just remember standing next to him going, damn, this is the biggest human being I've ever seen in my, like just the biggest human being I've ever met in all my years. I've never met a person a living person you know it's almost like it's like an elephant or something like you know what i mean it's almost he looks inhuman if he was born 200 years ago he'd be the town giant like you know people would write books about him you know they, they think he's a mythical creature yeah. of some sort Shaq he is that now. big it makes no sense because usually when you see dudes that are seven feet tall they're usually small they're, they're lanky they're like minute bowl they got Jeez. long skinny Shaq. arms and you know kareem abdul jabbar Shaq is seven feet tall and bulky and big and muscular. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I just felt weird even being around him. I mean, have you ever met anyone bigger than Shaq? I don't think so. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. What else you got coming up? Um, you got your weed line? Yep, Super Punch. Yep. Super Punch is going crazy. Go to superjudah.com. Superjudah.com. S-U-P-E-R-J-U-D-A-H.com. Get you some, some merchandise, rolling trays, lighters. Yeah, I still use the rolling trays at home. That's what's sad. Yep. <laughs> I can see your face every time I light up. <laughs> Simple punch. <laughs> That's what it is, man. Zab Judah, always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. Me Word. and you, you know, I consider my friend in real life. Facts. You know, guys, I mean, me and you have done, you know, not only dope interviews, but you've done dope interviews for us. At the Mike Tyson interview, we got some more that we're working on, mm -hmm. you know, in the works. We're not going to say what they are yet, but it's it's, it's going to be very unexpected. It's fire, baby. It, it Super comes fire. together. <laughs> it comes together, man. You know, congrats, you know, to your, your two young children. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And your family. Seems like you're doing good. You look great. You look like you're in, in great shape. My three young boys, Little Zab and Preston and Princeton. That's what it is, man. Yeah. Until next time. Peace.